I spent six months job hunting in the publishing space after leaving my book marketing job. Uh, so this video is going to be an honest account of everything that I learned about the book business during that time, about the publishing industry. So I thought we could uh, just get vulnerable for a minute, really, and get an honest conversation going. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Lauren. I'm a published author as well as book strategist, and I think it's only fair to kick off with a tiny bit of context, okay? Just a little bit. I wanna get into the meat just like you do, but it's important to know my background is not in publishing. My background is not in English. My background is not in journalism. I don't have any of those backgrounds. It's an elementary education. I thought I was gonna do that for the next 30 to 40 years. I taught for one year at the sixth grade level, it was really scary. <laughs> and I did that for one year before hiking over to Chicago for graduate school. And that is where our story begins. Okay, so just catching you up. That's all you got to know. We're getting into the story now. <laughs> I was searching around for jobs. I, I wasn't really seeing much. I didn't have many connections in the Chicago area. We were still sort of in the pandemic, kind of coming out of it. So it was just a funky time all around. And my then boyfriend, now fiance, <laughs> was catching up with a friend of his who happened to work in book marketing. She was a book launcher. I didn't know what that was. I had never heard that term before. And he had mentioned to her like, oh, hey, you know, she's, you know, my girlfriend's job hunting right now. She's also working on a book because at the time I was working on my now published novel, novel memoir called the finer things club about working in yellowstone national park as a young adult and she was like oh hey actually i'm six months into working as a book launcher and we're needing more of these like account managers or these project managers you know in the book launch space so yeah like i'm happy to have a conversation with her about what that looks like how it all works you know what a day in the life is like and of course i was like yeah like i don't have anything to lose i need money um i don't have a job i need to like rents coming up you know like all the stuff so i'm like yeah sure like why not she's an in i know her she knows me she's friends with my boyfriend like it all works out it just clicked into place really well actually it was weird so i had a conversation with her and she kind of told me about what she did and basically it was marketing a book before its publication so you're building up hype so that by the time it comes out everyone knows about it and wants to buy it and like party with you and like be in your circle right so she eventually introduced me to her director we got a conversation going and i was offered a part-time job to start at 25 dollars an hour and at the same time i had applied just on a whim i had applied to a six month editorial internship at a local publisher just to kind of get my feet wet. I would be working 20 to 30 hours a week. I would get paid about like $80 a week. So I just applied to that on a whim and I ended up getting that opportunity as well, which is great. This is a good problem, I'm totally aware. It was probably for, I don't know, a good three or four weeks where I was just kind of in limbo and I felt like I had to choose like which one they both, like I want to do both of these things. I want to go all in on both of these things. But the six month editorial internship, like it sounded really, really great. And I was genuinely excited about it. Plus they wanted someone with my background in education to kind of like help them with one of their imprints. So, you know, it's six months, it's not a lot of pay. I don't even know if I'm getting a job afterwards. There's just a lot of unknowns, right? So I got connected with this former intern who had worked at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt as a result of that internship, which to me was just like, oh, it was like total it was total it was total prestige okay like that's if you don't know they're a very well-known educational publisher and so when she said that i was like oh my god like maybe this is worth it so i was really really having a hard time but at the end of the day basically tldr um i ended up doing both at the same time for about three months pulling 12 hour days <laughs> i was exhausted <laughs> so after about three months or so half of the internship that i had signed up for i ended up jumping ship and going full time with my book launching job because they offered me a full time position. It's easier to go up from there, you know, from part time to full time with the same job than it is to, you know, work six months for not a lot of pay at an at a local publishing house that might or might not hire you, depending on what their budget is, their staffing, whatever. So I ended up kind of going all in with that. And that felt really, really good because it was steady pay. I was learning a lot of information really quickly. And I was just, I've just felt I just felt like I had kind of found my my niche. You know, I just kind of felt like I liked the culture. I liked the people. I liked the work that I was doing. There was a lot of information to learn. I felt like I was exercising both sides of my brain. I had the creativity like deliverable writing a book that's amazing type stuff and then i had like the project management the strategy 
the you know balancing 10,000 pieces at once and for whatever reason it just itched a very it itched a very particular itch in my brain <laughs> so my job was basically to manage a lot of the moving pieces the the moving pieces around their particular project or campaign for their book if that makes any sense so i ended up staying with them for about a year i left but in that one year time span, I had co-managed numerous best-selling accounts, including the Wall Street Journal and USA Today. I had co-led nearly two dozen, I would say, strategy sessions with these potential clients, with C-suite executives, with thought leaders, with entrepreneurs, with these financial gurus, like you name it. I was, I was in the room with these powerful people contributing my knowledge and what I had to say to, you know, what a potential strategy for them could look like if they wanted to hire us for a book launch. And within that time, I had traditionally published my very own book that went on to become an Amazon number one bestseller. So there was a lot that happened within that one year time span that I could continue to build off of. So I started applying to other like book marketing jobs. And where it got frustrating was as I was applying to all these other book marketing, book publishing, whatever jobs, they were asking for all of these skills, which I felt like I had. I felt like I had strong communication skills. I was chatting with clients and team members on a daily basis. I, I had to respond to emails in a 24 hour time frame from multiple people. I felt like I had really strong editorial skills. I was, I'd written my own book. I had, I had, I was an editorial intern for a brief period where I was looking at other people's writing. I had to learn about the Chicago manual of style manual, whatever that is. I always forget the name. <laughs> I, you needed to have strong organizational skills. That's no problem. I was a project manager, honey. I can do that stuff in my sleep. It's all good. I am the organizational queen. I'll have you know. None of this stuff was new. This is stuff that you learn with every new opportunity that you get. I was good at it then, but I knew that I could keep improving. So how could I prove that I had these skills any more than I already was through cover letter, through you know, my resume through, uh, what is that called? Letters of recommendation, like short of going on trial at a new job for two weeks, like I didn't know what else to do. Like you could say that 10 million other people also have those skills. So it's like, I knew that there was something specific they were wanting, but they just weren't telling me. So I was just, I felt like I was kind of like going on like a hamster wheel or something. I'm like, I, I'm doing everything right. But like, I still feel like there's like, I'm missing something, you know? So around this time, I was still kind of early on in my job hunting journey, maybe about a month or two in, and I had applied to a job through, which is also a well-known publisher. They had a position open that was very, very similar to mine. I think the title was it's like project manager or something like that. So um, I ended up chatting with an in-house recruiter who would reached out to me after I applied pretty recently. And she was like, hey, you know, you seem like you'd be a really good fit for the role. It seems like you were in a very similar spot. You know, I'm, I, I feel like there's a lot of overlap here. So she gave me a culture quiz. And then I guess from there, we would have had, you know, begun the interview process or something. So I took this culture quiz and she was like, just answer honestly, there's no wrong answers. And like, I'm, if there's something on the line, if there's something at stake, there's always going to be a wrong answer. You know, there aren't wrong answers, but there are, you know? So I did it honestly. I answered honestly and I got it back to her within, you know, a day, 24 hours or so. Um, and pretty soon right after, like a day or two after I submitted it, she was like, oh, doesn't look like it's going to be a fit. Sorry, we're moving on, which is fine. But it was a little frustrating because it's like we didn't even have a conversation, you know, like it was it, it was it was a filtration process. Like, I get it, you know, but it's like those are things that you show on the job. Again, it's all demonstrative. It's like, let's maybe have one 15 minute conversation just to like get a vibe check, just see if there's it was there is none of that, which is fine. You know, every company has their way of doing their own thing. I just thought it was like I, I felt like I almost had something and then it and then it went away. So I had to start all over again. I was just having a really hard time finding these jobs. It's like my credentials weren't all the way there. I could have had more experience, but the experience that I did have was really, really condensed. And so it's like if I learned all that stuff in one year. I would think that that is really attractive to an accru to a recruiter or an employer because it's like, wow, this is someone who can learn really quickly on the job. She learned all of that with no background in it. Like that tells me that she doesn't mess around. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not at all trying to brag here. I'm just trying to like play the other perspective, right? Like that's kind of what I would be thinking, but you know, maybe my thinking's a little biased. <laughs> maybe I'm a little salty still, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, okay, Lauren, we need to just reset and make sure we're like considering everything there's to be considered that we're leveraging everything that can be leveraged. And then I had a mini epiphany where I was like, you know, my background is very, very heavy and strong in education. My recent experience is in book marketing. 
I, there's got to be a way to combine those. So I thought a little bit harder and I was like, oh, educational publishing. Like that would be a shoe in If I have all of this practical and theoretical knowledge in education, I've written the book, I've done marketing, I've done all these things, I've worked with these authors, it's all non, everything I've done is nonfiction. Like, why wouldn't that work out? So I started applying to all these like educational publishers and still wasn't hearing anything. And it's like, I know there was just some magical ingredient that I am just not getting. Like, I don't know what it is. And that's, that's where it came. That's when I learned it's not about what you know. It's always about who you know. Okay. Some of you out there might already know this, but as a young professional, this, if you kind of have to learn it on your own, it can be a little bit jarring about what you know is a fraction of it. It's and it, it gets so unfair. That's, that's a fraction of it, honey. It's always about who do you know and who do they know? Who can work some magic somewhere on the back end to give you that opportunity? When it comes to publishing, especially, it's like, it's like moving to a small town where everyone knows each other and you're the new kid who's trying to like get to know everyone. You're getting the cold shoulder a little bit. No one knows you, no one trusts you. They haven't heard of you before. You could be an ax murderer for all they know. I had just moved into a small town knowing no one, having a year of experience and the clothes on my back and saddled with student debt, trying to make some magic happen and I didn't know anyone. That was it. If I play on my knowledge and my experience, with every job, then with every new one that I get, I'm gonna have to start over. I can't give you more experience than what I have, but I need a job to get the experience. Unless you know someone, you're just another face in the crowd. So, oh my God, I took another step back and I was like, okay, we are gonna go full on Nancy Drew sleuthing here on LinkedIn, okay? Because I was familiar enough with LinkedIn, freaking everyone is on LinkedIn. <laughs> so I go on LinkedIn and I'm like Googling people that I know, I'm going into their contacts, I'm using the filters and seeing who they know, who's in the Chicago area or who know, da da da. Like, it's like, if I had a map on my wall, it would have all of the little red pins in it with like the, with like the ropes tied between it and like excerpts from newspapers, like all of that would be, that was, <laughs> that was all, I was sleuthing so hard, my dude. I was asking all of my best connections if they knew anyone who was hiring because what I didn't wanna do is I really, really tried to avoid asking people I knew if they were hiring because that's a lot of pressure. You're kind of putting an awkwardness on the relationship you have with them. So I would go around to my best connections asking them like, do you know anyone in your, network who's maybe hiring this is the kind of thing i'm looking for and then if they wanted to present me with a job if they had an opening then they could but that awkwardness would kind of be off of them and on you know people people they know so i was asking everyone if they knew someone i got connected to one person for a part-time job and i i'm still in touch with her and i still do a little bit of work with her she's awesome i was like considering who could i possibly know anywhere in my network and who do they know and how can i ask for an introduction like i it was ridiculous. And in combination with that, I was like, well, shoot, do I need to like go back to school? Do I need to like get a certificate? Should I get another low paying internship? And I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing any inter internships for that. I get it. You don't want to shell out $80,000 for someone who might not stick around, but it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's, it's hard to live off internship money. I can tell you as a young professional, it's hard. This is when I realized that you have to sacrifice years, years of your time and your energy and your money to just be considered for the job. And again, I'm still talking about like book related publishing book industry, right? Like it's, I'm sure a lot of that is still applicable for other industries and niches out there, but I am an expert in my experience and my focus has always been on books. If it's not education, it's books and they often overlap. But I was like, I, I could be $50,000 in debt and do all of that for a $45,000 position in New York City where everything, including the water, is overpriced, probably. You know, it's, and that's the thing, it all happens in one of the world's most expensive cities. You gotta do all of that for $45,000 and be okay with it. And I am not, there's no one in particular that I'm bad mouthing. That's not at all what I'm doing. It's just, I'm commenting on the culture of it. I'm commenting on how I don't love that this is how it is. I think it's ridiculous that you have to break your back to prove that you deserve to be considered, to have a spot in the room, to have a seat at the table. Like I get it, publishing 
is so, so, so niche. Book publishing is very, very niche. It's a small town. You only get a certain number of people who get to move into that town because there's only a certain number of spots. I totally get it. I totally get it. But it's when you're a young professional starting out, none of this is explained to you. It's, it's all learning it for yourself. And when that happens, it's just, it bears a lot more weight than it does to maybe someone else who knows someone who can give them that next great opportunity that maybe has a little bit better pay, all because they happen to know someone. Word of mouth will always be top. It'll always be tip of the top, cream of the crop. People like getting recommendations from people they like, know, and trust, right? That's, that is all that marketing is. That's a huge part of what marketing is. I totally get it. But again, when you're learning this for yourself, it is such a hard thing to learn. And because it's so niche, I had no idea that this was a profession you could go into. How could you know that a copywriter at a book publisher is a job that you have unless you know someone or have heard of someone who's in that kind of job? You just don't know about that stuff. There's, there's being a teacher, there's being a librarian, there's being an author, which by the way, there's not money in being an author. I'm just gonna let you, in any of those things, anything in the arts, there's no money in it, right? Where in my life have I ever heard of book publishing fitting into that category? You just don't, unless you're just insanely curious and you find out from a young age that's a possibility. I just don't see how you know about that kind of thing and plan and, and, and prepare for that kind of thing through, through school unless you know someone. Like I just, truly, I don't, I don't know any, I didn't know anyone in publishing. I had no connections. I had no credibility. I had one book and one year of experience to my name. And sure, it wasn't naive of me to think that I could make all this magic happen. Sure. But I wasn't asking, I was not asking for a gold throne. I was asking for employment with a steady paycheck, maybe some benefits, maybe a 401k. Like personally, I don't think that's too much to ask. That's all I wanted. Your girl is not materialistic, okay? And it's like I had to break my back to prove that I deserved it. It was just twisted. So that's when I made the second pivot, which is one that I'm sure a lot of people out there are familiar with, which is going the entrepreneurial route, my friends. <laughs> It was the exact same logic for why so many people out there decide to write a book. If you don't see the book that you wanna read on the shelf, write it yourself. If you don't see the job that you want or the kind of work that you want, make it for yourself. And that's when you start playing the long game. That's when you shift from the short game of, oh, I just want a steady paycheck and do something I like to, okay, now we're talking about building something. Like that's a whole different conversation. And for me, I was fortunate enough and privileged enough to be able to make a little bit of that jump because I had gotten a couple part-time jobs along the way. There are just so many things that a person could not know unless they experience it for themselves or talk with someone who's open enough to discuss what their real experience was like, which, you know, pe people don't want to do that, right? Because they don't, they don't want to lose their jobs. They don't want to burn any bridges. Like I, I totally get it. But everything that I've learned is just through experience. It's through Googling, it's through reading, it's through blogs, it's through classes, it's through articles. I am just an extremely observant and reflective person. So everything that I've learned or researched I try to put into these videos to educate aspiring authors, people who are curious about the book biz as a whole. Like I want to tell them the things that they don't know to save them time and frustration because that's so, so frustrating. You have all these big goals and dreams and these expectations and then something doesn't go the right way and you're like, shoot, is it all like this? And you're like, mm, yeah, kind of, or well, yeah, sometimes. And it's like, I mean, it can be heartbreaking. Like you're supposed to love books for the sake of loving books, but love and appreciation does not pay the girl's bills. You know, like it's all great. They're all, all of the arts are honorable, painting, music, teaching, librarian work, working with books, but you can't expect someone to just accept the bare minimum, like financially, because they're supposed to love it. I think that's, I think that's, I don't think that's right personally. So that's what I try to do now. I just try to save you people time, bring different topics to your consciousness to make you aware of all these different things that you might not know about unless you're in it or you get close to it or you start looking more into it, like whatever the case is. That's what I like to do. I genuinely love talking about this stuff because it makes me happy, benefits you, and it's it's about building these kinds of long-term conversations and in in positively influencing the culture one conversation one person at a time right so that's what i do
I educate y'all. I hope you got something out of this video. I figured it would be kind of a longer one, but uh, yeah, if you have comments to share, if you want to get a conversation going, if you want to tell me about an experience that you have or an honest perspective you have to share, but you don't want to post it, I created an email just for YouTube. I think it's Lauren Erickson YT at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So if you want to send me some stories, if you want to like just talk to me one on one, feel free to reach out that way if you're not comfortable putting stuff online. Um, but anyway, that's all I have. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.